Evening all, just to let you know, the video you're about to watch, the audio is perfect. John the Casey, his video is perfect. My video doesn't exist. It's it's a, uh, a black on black screen. I don't know what StreamYard did to me, but it screwed it right up. Anyway, it's okay because John speaks for most of this video anyway, and you can hear me, but you know, probably a good thing. You can't actually see me for once. Anyway, enjoy the video. See you soon. The Daily Ramble on Claret and Booze. Good afternoon and welcome to the Daily Ramble here on Claret and Booze. My name's Gary and we have a very special Daily Ramble for you today, focused entirely on the uh, the case against Lucas Paqueta, <clears throat> or Paquetar as some people like to call him. As you probably all follow West Ham, I'm sure you're aware of the, the circus, the social media circus around Lucas Paqueta. Uh, Paqueta. With many YouTube channels, you know, initially reacting uh, uh, quite quite badly, actually, um, making an assumption that he was guilty based on uh, what they saw in a few videos, a few tackles, you know, the kind of tackles that we see Lucas Paqueta commit game after game. Gabby Agbon Lahore on Talksport declared he was guilty after reviewing the video footage. Um, and in the last few days, we've heard Paqueta's legal team ask for an extension. Um, to their, to you know, they were, they were due to plea, I believe, on Monday. Um, and on the same day, several media outlets got very, very excited because it was rumoured that the FA was um, were looking to ban Lucas Paqueta for life and that he might not play for West Ham again. Some people saying he might not be able to play for West Ham while this case is going on. So you get the picture. There is a lot of, of um, excitement, let's say, around this. But we're going to debunk a lot of that stuff. And on Claret and Booze, as you know, we like to take a slightly different approach. And uh, speaking personally, I don't like second guessing the legal process, which is why I defaulted my view to um, innocent until proven guilty, uh, as did Nick, actually. Uh, uh, so uh, while that's still my position, I'm very, very interested in the facts and, and what's actually going to happen. And, and in order to look at those facts, we, we needed an expert. Um, and so we got one. We got an expert, and we have one of the best experts in John Kame, who is a a lifelong West Ham fan. Um, he sits in the posh seats, granted. Um, and in this show, we're going to try and, with the help of John, try and sort the wheat from the chaff. So no conspiracy theories on this show. Now, John, to introduce him, is one of the country's leading KCs, a senior barrister who specialises in, in criminal law and homicide. So. I know at the London Stadium, you and I, John, we we watched Liverpool recently, and you said your your most recent cases have been prosecuting murderers and the occasional serial killer thrown in. But I think you know one, um, and, and many of them have made the media. But one name that I think everybody will recognise is Charles Bronson. So, what did you have to do with Charles Bronson, John? Well, that that was uh, thanks for having me on, Gary. Um, it's been an ambition of mine to be on Claret and Booze for many months, actually, because, as you know, I'm a, I'm a fanatical, lifelong West Ham supporter. Yeah. And um, I've contributed to your phone-ins on occasions, but but this is uh, a great opportunity to to put right a lot of the r rumours uh, that are flowing around the Twitter sphere and the social media sphere at the moment. We'll come on to that. Um, in answer to your question, I it was many years ago now. It was actually 30 years ago when I was very, wow. very young and very junior. And um, somebody fell ill and I had to fill, fill his shoes at the last minute. And I ended up prosecuting a chap called Charles Bronson. And they said, oh, be careful of him. He has the world record for press-ups and it takes 10 screws to hold him down when he kicks off. Oh. Um, in those days, you had no protection at all. So I prosecuted this man for taking prison librarian hostage. And I think it's featured in the film, actually, with Tom Hardy. Yeah. But I didn't get any credits for it. He got 14 years. It was one of the funniest cases I've ever done. Um, quite a charming man in a, uh, in a peculiar sort of way. Um, he wanted to have a, well, he, he was, it was a dispute about a blow-up doll, Gary. Um, <laughs> and it, 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 I won't, you know, it's a long story, but he yeah. wanted uh, some company. He'd held the record for the number of years in solitary confinement and he wanted some company. And um, 
you know, he, he felt that a blow-up doll would be only a reasonable compromise, but the Home Secretary didn't want it, so he took the librarian hostage, and it all got quite ugly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's, it, it's amazing. I, I've 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 seen the film. I've seen the <clears> film, and he, he's a, a different level. So, so how far away were you standing? You were totally unprotected as the prosecution. Um, how far away from him were, were you? Well, I, I remember going to see the judge at the time. Um, he was a lovely bloke, sadly no longer with us. And I was saying, look, you know, he he holds the record for taking people hostage, and uh, he's a very powerful man. I want some protection. He said, oh, no, Mr. Cammy, we, no, that, that sort of thing doesn't happen in this court, not in my court. Yeah. I thought, All right, then, OK, um, we'll see what happens. And we had a delay, actually, because his barrister was a lovely lady who, who passed away uh, last year, and she genuinely, one of, the, one of the greats, a lady called Isabella Forshaw. Isabel was um, just just a great character, and, and we were both quite young at the time, and... and uh, she had a good relationship with with Charlie. I think she'd represented him on a number of occasions. And, and she came up and she said, look, I, we have a, a slight problem. Mr. Bronson is, is happy to attend court, but he will only, um, he only on condition he can sit in the dock naked. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Brilliant. And uh, just said, no, no, he can, he can be, there are standards, you know, we, we can't have defendants sitting in the dock naked, you know, yeah. there, are, there are members of the jury, here, members of the public, it, it sets out the wrong, wrong impression altogether. So she went away and took instructions from her clients, as you do, and she mm. came back with a compromise, and that was for him to be sat wearing a bin liner. But... Um, <laughs> judge said, no, 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 we, we can't have brilliant defendants wearing bin liners in the courtroom. And eventually he he relented and yeah. uh, he was quite a character. Um, oh, yeah, amazing. One, one, of, one of those those colourful characters. I'm not sure he, he's ever killed anybody. He's hurt a few people. He, he has. He was into bare knuckle boxing and stuff like that, wasn't he? As uh, well, yeah, but, he you know, he's, he's, he's one of those, uh, he, he's last of the dying breed of those sort of yeah. iconic criminals. Yeah. who has his own sort of moral code um, in his eyes. Yeah. Um, but uh, a colourful character. I mean, you've got to be a colourful character to have Tom Hardy playing you in uh, in a very, film like that. No, very true, very true. And Tom Hardy mm. is, um, yeah, he played that role very well, must must admit. So number yeah. one, you may remember, as, as a West Ham audience, a bit closer to home is uh, Essex boy Craig, Craig Rolfe. So um, you got him off. John, as you defended him and got him off for a domestic burglary in late '95, and that, what happened again, shortly after that? Yeah, I mean, th this was probably within six months or a year or so of doing the Bronson case. And I mean, again, I was very junior, and, and in those days, um, I used to work a lot in Essex, mainly in Chelmsford, current mm. court. And uh, Craig Rolfe was charged with a domestic burglary, and I got on with him really well. It was a really nice bloke, and uh, it went before the jury. It lasted three or four days, and um, he was found not guilty. And I remember his girlfriend was there and the family were very happy. I think they were all going to go out on the piss afterwards. <laughs> and um, three weeks later, he was in that Range Rover. So, um, yeah, were it not for that, he would have been inside and he, he wouldn't have lost his life. But uh, wow. we're, going, we're going back a long time. I mean, this is, um, you know, the sort of work that I would do. Yeah. Way, way back in the old days, uh, you know, he, he might be a big name in, in underground terms, but it was just a run of the mill case, really. Yeah. The sort of stuff I did all the time back then. So, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a name that a lot of your viewers might be familiar with, anyway. Uh, I think so. And uh, so, look, as I hope you can see, we gave those two examples just to show what kind of profile of, uh, of Barrister John is. He, he's an expert, he's a, a law expert, and we're not going to mess around on this show. We want an expert's view. And so let's deal with the facts of the uh, the Lucas Paquetta case as we know them. So, um, so John, first of all, um, this is going to go to a tribunal. Now, he's been charged, and no doubt he has to enter a plea, and then it goes to a tribunal. Please explain. Yeah, um, I've served on a tribunal before, um, British Cycling Tribunal. So I, I have acted on a tribunal. I know how these things work. I'm not a sports lawyer per se, but um, I think really all you have to do in order to educate yourself as to, you know, the, the established facts so far is to do two things. You look on the FA website and see what he's charged with. 
And you can, if you want to, uh, Google Sky TV's coverage of the four incidents that fetched in those four, four uh, yellow cards. Um, and I think it's important to start out with that point because there's an awful lot of clickbait, hot air going on uh, on you know various media outlets, ma mainly social media ones, uh, from people claiming that they've heard rumours of, oh, the FA want a 10-year ban or rumours that he didn't want to play against Bournemouth. Um, and, and the FA are not going to take that position, are they, publicly? No, 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 no. And, and the, FA, the, the, the FA don't want or they're not seeking a 10-year ban. The FA are seeking for a tribunal that, that is three um, impartial lawyers who are very experienced in, in, in sports law and particularly FA related matters to hear the evidence, make an adjudication and uh, find that he's either culpable or not. If he's culpable, then he will be sanctioned in an appropriate way. That will be the remit of the independent tribunal a lot of people a lot of cynics conspiracy theorists you know will say well the fa tribunal the three people that sit on it would have been appointed by the fa that is true they are part of a, a wide panel and three individuals will be drawn from that panel in order to um, adjudicate on this case but i think one thing that i want to set out straight away is that people have got to respect that tribunal um, just because they are drawn from an FA um, pool of of, uh, uh, of um, lawyers, if you like, doesn't mean to say they're going to do the FA's bidding. Their findings will be impartial, and they will be correct. And I'm, I've got every every confidence in that. And having served on a British cycling tribunal myself, I'm fully aware of how assiduous and how careful people on the tribunal are so you don't think they're going to be influenced by the fa in any way not at all and if anybody is harboring that sort of view to generate clickbait and to um, profit from you know advertising on you know far-fetched articles online um hopefully this video will go some way to debunk that there, there is no hidden agenda the fa are under pressure to stamp out um uh abuse of, or corruption in sport as are any sporting uh, body that the arbiter or, or have the uh, uh you know have have overall um control um and governance of of which, which, whichever sport you're you're dealing with but they yeah. are not seeking to make examples of people for the sake of it that's that's ridiculous Okay, so it's not so. I mean that, and that is what it's been painted painted as in many in many places, especially this rumor about the, uh, the you know the FA want ten years, uh, want to give them a lifetime ban. That's kind of making it personal, if you like, and it's not personal, is it? It's a it's it's a case of following legal process. Uh, absolutely, I mean it's tantamount to saying, oh, we, we've got a jury trial. Uh, and, and the judge has already preordained that someone is guilty and he's going to give him a 10 year sentence. Yeah. It doesn't happen. No. I mean, it, can you imagine uh, what would happen to the FA and the credibility and the authority that the FA have if it were ever found that someone on the FA's disciplinary panel had spoken out like that? It, it's just nonsense. You know, these people are professionals. Yeah. And. Um, it, I'm afraid there is a very strong distinction between the facts and, you know, I think part of this video we're, we're going to establish just how limited those established facts are yeah. because we don't know. There's a very uh, strong distinction between what we know to be true and the, um, you know, the nonsense that's being peddled by a, a lot of people who, um, mm. I don't sound too sort of cynical, but you can imagine a lot of people putting this stuff out are on sites or streaming services that have advertising and it suits yeah. them to get clicks and subscribers, et cetera, et cetera. We you know, it's it's unfortunately the way the way uh, social media works. No, absolutely. There was another rumor going around about you, you know, Paquetta <clears throat> wouldn't be able to play for West Ham while this tribunal's going on again. But for well, uh, again, uh, you know, I go back to what I said just now. It's tantamount to prejudging something, isn't it? It doesn't happen. Yeah, you, 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 you are, you are not. The FA are not at liberty 
to um, ban Lucas Paqueta unless and until he is found culpable of um, an offence against the association rules. Yeah. That's it. End of. And, and then the question is, well, how long will it be until the tribunal takes place? Again, that's a grey area. We already know that, uh, I think it was the 3rd of June, which was two days ago, He that was the deadline by, by when he had to file his response. He's asked for more time. Yeah. Um, perfectly reasonable and perfectly within the rules. And uh, quite reasonably within the rules, the FA have given him more time. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that actually... Uh, there is an awful lot that we don't know. We only know the tip of the iceberg. We don't know what lies beneath. And if there is, ev is evidence that lies beneath, it's only reasonable that he has time to make his own inquiries and investigations in order to meet the allegations and to meet the evidence that the FA say that they've got. Now, I said earlier on that the only two things we know for sure are a the rules and, and the well the charges that he's faced. We'll go into those in a moment. Yeah, and we also uh, have um, publicly available, of course, the footage. But there may be an awful lot that lies behind that footage. Yeah, you know, um, do, we'll come on to this later on. Do, um, do you but, think? Do you think that the charges were made because the FA seemed to act really quickly, and it was based on I think um, Lucas Paqueta um setting a deadline for either charge me or let me go you know uh, or, or or there is no case do you think he forced himself into a corner there i think every party all three parties here that's um the fa lucas Paqueta, and west ham have got to tread really really carefully hmm. from now on um they they really do Lucas Paquette, I can't believe that his lawyers would have uh, recommended he take that, that course. I, when I read about that, I thought that, that was a bit silly because you, you don't throw the gauntlet down to the FA. No. You don't throw the gauntlet down to anybody. All it does is provoke um, maybe an even more diligent investigation than, the, than was already going on. You, you don't hold a gun to the FA's head. That, that was uh, silly. And I, I can't imagine that his lawyers would have um, willingly uh i kind of i can't imagine his lawyers would have advised him to actually go out and and you know make that threat yeah, um, yeah. whether the fa uh have proceeded now in response to that threat as if they'd be goaded by that threat no i again you're talking about professional people they they would have had um an inquiry um extant for quite some time and although it would have wound them up a bit it wouldn't have helped his cause I can't imagine um, in any way, shape or form that it would have affected the um, robustness of their of their inquiry. OK, and just, and just one more piece of rumour I need to put to bed that's happened in the last couple of days, and that is the rumour that Paqueta didn't even want to play. He asked not to play against Bournemouth. I mean, is that a rumour, do you think, that's, that's put out there by his team? Oh, I don't care who's put the rumour out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crap, isn't it? I mean... Yeah. Um, a rumor is a rumor and yeah. has no weight whatsoever yes. with what i do you deal with evidence yes and you deal with weight weight of evidence right you don't you don't deal with hearsay you don't deal with tittle tattle yeah and wherever this has sprung up from all i know for sure is that a lot of uh, outlets have jumped on that in order to get more attention yes yes Absolutely. And, and, you know, just just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um the the actual process itself, John, the the um the, the process of the tribunal, what what kind of you know, there's three three independent lawyers who are selected, and then yeah. what happens from there? Well, um it's already begun, of course, because Paqueta has all, already uh, been charged. We're going to go through those in a moment, if I may, because mm -hmm. I think I think this is another really important thing to actually set out precisely what these charges are and, and what potentially they mean. Yeah. Um, you, you, you are charged and you will already have your legal team in place. He's probably had the same legal team in place since about August when all this first came to light. Um, although, of course, he's only just been charged. So yeah. it's only now that he will know um, precisely what he's facing. So one would assume that by laying those uh, charges, the FA have also um, 
disclose their evidence to Lucas Paqueta. You don't get a charge without evidence. You have to. You have the right to know what case you're facing. Yeah. You have the right to know what it is that you're supposed to defend. I think one. Um, maybe we'll come on to this later on. But I think so. So they will be aware. The, the 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 his lawyers will be aware of what evidence is going to be presented against him. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I, I was about to come on to. Um, you see, here's the difficult part for Lucas Paquetta. There are many difficulties for Lucas mm. Paquetta. I mean, I, you know, I'm not not going to be naive about about what we've all seen on Sky. But um, in a criminal court, when a prosecution brings a case against the defendant, we have what is called the burden and the standard of proof. The burden is on the prosecution to prove their case. Yeah. The standard of proof in a criminal court is the old the old phrase used to be um, beyond reasonable doubt. We use a different phrase now, satisfied so that you're sure. So the jury have got to be sure. Mm. In civil proceedings, and this counts as a civil proceeding, this is not a criminal court, the burden is on the um, FA and their legal team who are bringing this case to prove it. But the standard of proof is lower. They only have to convince the three people on the tribunal to the extent that they um, are satisfied on the balance of probabilities. So it's it's a lower bar. Right. Um, and essentially, it, it you know puts the defence in a slightly more difficult position because they have to go that extra mile in order to convince the tribunal that the probabilities are more in their favour than the um, than the FAs. The difficulty that, that Lucas Paqueta may be facing here, and I think this is where both Paqueta and in fact the FA have got to be really, really careful, because at the bottom line is these proceedings have got to be no less fair than they are in a criminal court. But the difficulty for Lucas Paqueta is, if you think about it, and I, I appreciate there may be more to this other than you know the footage on the TV, but yeah. if you're looking at the footage alone, he's in a very difficult position where he's got to prove a negative. He's got to prove, no, these weren't bookings to water. Yeah. How is he going to do that? It, it, it is impossible to, to what we call prove a negative. Well, this uh, is a problem. If he if he's actually, let's just play devil's advocate and say he had nothing to do with this. It was just a coincidence. Let's just assume that for a second. Yeah. How can you prove? You know, we, you know nothing about it. So how can you come up with? How, how can you? How could you actually prove that position, John? It's a bit difficult, isn't it? Well, you can't. But hmm. but you see, um, I mean, I, I I don't want to. The last thing I want to do is speculate. God knows, yeah. there's far too much of that going on, right? Of course. Now. But Lucas Paqueta may. Um, I mean, he's pleading not guilty to this, obviously. But when it comes um, to the footage, right? So I, I've been watching this again today. You've got the three yellow cards against, is it Sumar or Sumari of Leicester? Yeah. I think, was it John McGinn of Aston Villa? It was, it was. Um, and then you've got Somerville of Leeds. Then, then you've got the the handball, which is a you know, slightly different kettle of fish. But all three of those challenges, I mean, we know what Lucas Paqueta is like. He, he does have the, the odd rash challenge in him. So does Alvarez. Yeah. You know? We, we, it's one of the reasons we we like Paqueta because he is full blooded when he, when he's on the pitch. Um, he winds people up. He's the sort of player that we would hate to play against because he often makes a meal out of you know fouls that, that on he, him. He it? generates conflict and he gets opposition players riled, and there are little flashpoints all over the pitch. He does, right? he, he, he does it all the time. Yeah, and he's probably second only to um, Alvarez in terms of you know having a tricky sort of disciplinary. Yeah. Uh, mentality if you like he he might say well look you know i've only just missed the ball and all three of those challenges you could you could make an argument that, that yeah they were a little bit rash but yeah you know but but for a fraction he's failed to make contact with the ball yes they're all behind but they were that close from being great tackles all three of them yes uh, now, that, that, that's that, what that, i saw yeah yeah so 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 you've that's his starting point you know how am i to convince the FA that I didn't do those to order. How yeah. can I convince the FA that these were actually me, Lucas Paqueta, playing as I do, a bit frustrated, going in a bit hard? Um, you know, it, it, it's that word speculation again. All the tribunal yeah. can do, in the absence of other evidence, we're going to come on to that. 
all the tribunal could do is, is, is speculate. Well, that's not enough. They can't be sure on the balance of probabilities that these are booked to order unless there's other evidence, because this is purely circumstantial. It could cut both ways. It could be capable of interpretation any which way you like. Um, and, and, you know, you could you could develop that. I don't know what his defence is going to be, right? But he could develop this. He could say, for example, in the McGinn one, because we all know what McGinn is like. He, he looked pretty uh, pissed off, didn't he? But you can see McGinn is quite a birdy kind of player. Um, Villa uh, were, in that game as well, Villa were targeting him quite a lot, right? They were they were quite niggly in that game. I think that's the one where we got slaughtered, wasn't it? Poor one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was embarrassing. That was a, a David Moyes masterclass. <laughs> it was, it was indeed. Um, I think I think what people probably don't know is that you and me and Nick for <laughs> we've got a long history, haven't we? At yeah. venting uh, supreme true. anger through texting and WhatsApp about David Moyes. Yeah, that that was that was a shocker. That was right up with with, with Newcastle last season. Um, yeah. But um. um yeah, I mean, he he might, for example, say, well, look, and this is one of the reasons why I think it's going to take some time before this gets into the tribunal. And this is why I think we may have Paqueta playing for us for quite a while yet. Paqueta might say, well, I did those fouls. But if you watch the whole game, and if you watch it from all the angles, bearing in mind, of course, he's not going to be on camera all the time. He might say, for example, there was a bit of afters there. That challenge on McGinn, we'd had a bit of a a rumble throughout the game. Yeah. Well, how are the FA going to deal with that? Because they can't deny it. And if you can point to some footage, right, involving Sumar, Somerville never struck me as a sort of player who who gets stuck in like that. Um, but particularly with McGinn, for example, he may well be able to point to footage and say, well, look, you know, he's had a go at me here. And I am Lucas Paqueta. I do like to get a bit of after this sometimes. That's what I was doing there. I wasn't doing it to order. I was doing it because I didn't particularly like John McGinn that day. And but he can I find 20 other there. examples, right? 20 other examples of where he, he put in rash challenges in the Premier League, like it, other games. It, 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 exactly. So what, what I'm saying is that I think that, because um, we're dealing with a lot of hysteria here. Mm. What I'm saying is this. I think that if the... Um, the only evidence against Lucas Paqueta is that, you know, th there's some evidence of, sounds dramatic, but a betting coup on Paqueta yeah. Island or a pattern of, of um, you know, peculiar betting taking place surrounding those four events. And I've heard, this is another thing I've heard. I mean, it, it, this is the, 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 the idiotic rumour sphere saying, oh, apparently it was only his mum and some of the neighbours or whatever, and it was only like, you know, five quid here and 25 quid there. Where'd they get I, that from? I don't think I've heard that one. I mean, no, I, I've, I've read that. I read relatives. that only in the last couple of days. And it, it's just, um, it, 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 again, it, it's just clickbait rubbish, total fiction. We and don't it, know. We have a guy no that earns 150 grand a week. I'm sure if his mum needed a couple of quid, she wouldn't have to put a bet on. The, the bottom line is, right, we don't know what the FA have. Hmm. And so I wish people would stop making things up. Because yeah. they don't know. If they think they know, name their source, please. Yes. But they never yeah. do, do they? They never do. No. So, um, look, I, my point is this. I think if it's left to just a, a, a pattern of betting thousands of miles away on the basis of four incidents, well, three, let's come onto the handball in a moment, I, I personally don't think that would be enough to sustain the charge. I think there's got to be other stuff. Moving on to the handball against Bournemouth, and I'm ignoring completely this this rumour that apparently he didn't want to play against Bournemouth. Again, where where is the source? And, yeah. and actually, if he didn't want, here's the thing: if he didn't want to play against Bournemouth, so what? He was that was August, right? Last yeah. year, first game, yeah. It, of course, it was, and and that was um, as we all know, the transfer windows open till something like the first of. September or beyond that, I can't remember. Yeah. But the tractor window was open and he was Manchester City bound at that time. So he was. if he didn't want to play, maybe he didn't want to get injured because he didn't want to ruin his dream move. Yeah. Because he would have been playing in the Champions League this season, last season. 
it just seemed like a ham fisted, you know, whoever put that out there. It's either made up completely or it's a ham fisted. It, it, it probably, it almost to... certainly was. But even if it wasn't, yeah. what does it prove? Nothing. It Nothing proves at all. That I wanted to keep fit in order that he could progress and move. It doesn't, it's no evidence whatsoever that he was um, involved in any kind of betting coup. So I suppose through, through one lens, you could say that, uh, oh, he didn't want to play, so therefore it didn't mean he had to be booked to satisfy the betting of course, coup. Of course. Um, um and what else yeah yeah I, I think but that's equally, it really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah yeah if you want to look on tittle tattler's gospel fine but, no, but no. What, what i would respond to that was it's even more in fact far more likely were that true that he wanted to remain fit and he wanted to ensure that every um uh, he, he had every opportunity of making that move yes so you know i think um I think it's 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 important. I mean, can I just go through what the the rules are that he's supposed to have infringed? Absolutely, let's do that. This this is uh, and this is available for everybody. All they need to do is go onto the FA's website. Um, and it, I, I, it's ironic, isn't it, that the FA that that allows so much betting within football. How long have West Ham been sponsored by a betting company? Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the protection the betting companies get is is out of proportion. Yeah. To you, you know. And how many and how many group lives are, are are ruined by betting? Well, many, many more than the harm that's done to betting companies by small time, you know, schemes like this. Uh, see, Frank, uh, I, I have no sympathy for the betting companies, frankly. Well, uh, of course not. I mean, I think the 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 double standards and the irony here is ridiculous. I mean, Sky Sports, hmm. they, they've got their own betting, um, uh, uh, I don't know what, outlet or whatever now, haven't they? Sky Bet. Yeah, they, they do. And, and and you've got Ray Winston oh, on there, uh, you know, mid-game, haven't you, telling you to put yeah. a bet on yeah. and all that sort of stuff. They've made it easy. You put You know, for the gambler, it's great, isn't it? You go onto your mobile, just slap a bet on. It's... Uh, it, it's not good and being able to bet on any instant in a game which is what spot fixing is is um i think that's a bad uh, i mean predict, predicting results outcomes win lose draw scores that seems reasonable betting on you know a player is going to get a yellow card late in the game or something like that or there will be five corners before the fifth the first 15 minutes you know that just seems a little bit extreme to me well Section 10 of the rules of the Football Association mm. include Rule E. Rule E, we're going to get a bit technical for a moment, but I promise yeah. you it won't last too long and it will all make sense because this has a beginning and an end, right? Rule E governs the, the general conduct. Um, so you're talking about discrimination. You're talking about integrity during the game, as in, you know, cheating. Um, yeah. You're talking about... Uh, sales of tickets is is uh, governed by rule E and betting, which again, you know, there's the irony. The, the, the FA uh, acknowledge betting, they allow betting, um, they allow teams to be sponsored by betting companies, but within their own rules, they are very careful about infringements in relation to betting. They're sort of, um, it's almost like they're riding two horses, isn't it? Betting's okay here, not so good there. That's amazing. So the code of conduct actually contains guidelines around betting. It does. And so we know um, that it's FA rule five, E5.1 5 that he is supposed to have infringed. And on the FA's website, it um, sets out the allegation in this way. It's alleged he, I'll read it, it, it it's alleged he sought to influence the progress conduct or any other aspect of or occurrence in these matches by and here's the allegation intentionally seeking to receive a card from the referee for the improper purpose of affecting the betting market in order for one or more persons to profit from betting in other words facilitating a betting yeah. do. Well, we all know about that. I mean, that, that's the four clips that we've talked yeah. about. And, and you know, the Bournemouth one, I, I think, look, you and I agree, don't we, Gary, that, that handball? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, that wasn't given as a handball. It was given as a foul, right? Because he, if you watch it in slow-mo, he didn't actually touch it with his hand, even though his hand goes up. I think it was like an elbow. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah. I would have, I, oh, well, then I'm, I stand corrected. I, I'm actually quite pleased to hear that because mm. an elbow is a little less overt and cynical than a handball. Yeah, I mean, because their arms, hands, their arms go up like that, don't they? They, they? they do, but I remember seeing that in the replay. It's often called a handball, but it's, that wasn't actually given for handball if you look back at well, what the referee awarded the yellow card for. Okay, well, it shows just how wrong we can be because I always understood it was a handball and, and you put me right. And I'm actually quite pleased to hear that because the handball is, I mean, as I just it's, said... It's a straight it's a yellow. Handball. It's a straight yellow. It's unavoidable, right? And it's very deliberate. Yeah. And it's inexplicable, inex inexplicable. Whereas an yes. elbow, that's more like Lucas Paqueta, isn't it? Being that's Lucas right. Paqueta, being a pain yes. in the ass. Fine. Yeah. Glad to hear that. But look, the, the, the more depressing, more concerning development, I think, relates to activity or his conduct since this all arose last mm. year. Because, of course, last year, we, we he became aware that there was an investigation in relation to betting. Yeah. What I think has tripped the FA into action is the um, the, the breach of, of FA rule F3. And um, it, it essentially, and again, I'll, I'll take this slowly. Um, there are two breaches, it is said, of alleged failures to comply with rule F2. So F3 is the charge. He is alleged to have failed to comply with F2. Right. So I'll deal with this very slowly. F2, this is what he's supposed to have breached, right? I'll read it out word for word. Okay. It's alleged that in, in carrying out its functions, um, no, sorry, this is the actual rule. So it's a bit boring, but it's important for me to read this out so we all know what he's facing. So rule F2 reads like this. In carrying out its functions under F1, the association shall have the power to require of any participant, Paqueta, mm. upon reasonable notice, which they'll say they gave him, and no doubt they did, one, his attendance or answering questions and providing information at the time and place determined by the FA. Well, that's the hearing. I haven't got that far yet. But here, here's the important part. Two, the provision to the FA of documents, information, or any other material held by the participant, or three, the procurement and provision of any such document, etc., that isn't held by the participant, but which he's got the power to obtain. Now, this suggests to me that it's not just about the coincidental betting activity on Paqueta Island in conjunction with what we see in those four clips this yeah. suggests to me that they've asked him for certain material and he's failed to on their account he's failed to provide them with it now um he he put out a statement immediately after he was charged wasn't he didn't he he, he, he did and he said he provided everything they'd requested exactly exactly um and maybe he has you know i mean I, 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 why should we doubt that? The FA seem to think that that he hasn't and that maybe there was further material that he could have disclosed. Wow. What would that material be? Well, well, typically, I think we're probably looking at mobile phones, um, mobile phone downloads. Um, yeah. I mean, in a criminal uh, context, they, they produce a phenomenal amount of, of evidence um, in terms of not, not just who's in your contact list and who you've been texting who you've been phoning, who's been phoning you. Um, they also provide um, evidence of your whereabouts because yeah. GPRS and lo Apple Locator will show where you've been to do expert analysis or interrogation of a phone. I, I, I use this in almost every case I do. Um, it demonstrates where someone has been, but more importantly, what it will do is show not just your email traffic, but it will show your internet search history too. Right. So um, if, for example, they've said to him, well, um, we want your phone. Um, he's saying, well, he's disclosed everything. Uh, this is entire speculation, right? Yeah. So no one should, should sort of run with this. Th this is just typically the kind of document that, that would be um, subject of something like this. 
maybe he surrendered his mobile phone. Maybe they felt that he would have the power to obtain and surrender the mobile phones of people on Paqueta Island. I don't know. Um, but the fact that the FA feel that he has failed to comply with with uh, their requirements, yeah, yeah, I think is what has really kicked this whole thing off onto another level. Yes, yes. and one can only hope that when he says, um, as unequivocally as he has, I've complied with everything. I've done everything I could. One can only hope that's true. But it takes me back to that dilemma of proving a negative. Yeah. Because how is he going to ever be able to prove that he that's all he could do? Yeah, because that could be anything, John. That could be him having time-limited um, deletions on his WhatsApp, right? So half of the messages have disappeared already. It could be that he's given the WhatsApp messages and not the actual device over right so he could be saying he's given his mobile phone records but actually has only given a subset maybe i mean again it's that um you know the, the jeopardy we're in right now is that we're we're speculating yeah. as well um who knows but that's the conflict isn't it the fa is saying one thing he's saying something completely different yeah um i i think if, if, for example, what he's saying is right, is that he's disclosed everything he could, mm. if the FA's complaint is <clears throat> that they feel that he could have, um, through family connections or, or whatever, because we don't know what, we don't even know if he's connected to the people who've laid the bets. That's I mean, right. Mustn't yeah. fall into yeah. that trap. Mustn't fall into the trap of, of, of taking as gospel the rumours which are their members of his friends and family. Yeah. All right. Because there is no information, there is no evidence available to us as to where this um, activity, the betting activity, took place. We've heard... That surely wouldn't be his responsibility anyway, would it, to get other people's phones or whatever? It just It can only provide what he can provide, surely. Well, the, the FA have very wide-ranging discretion. They have yeah. absolute discretion as to how they want to conduct their uh, inquiry. And if they have required him hmm. to produce certain documents... And I'll just read that that um, F two point three again. The procurement and provision of any document, etc., not yeah. held by the participant, but which the participant has the power to obtain. Well, that right. is sort of referring right, to right, people. Right. Yeah, you see could what I mean. Wife, people could who, be his agent, could be whatever. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it could be people who are close to him. Yeah, we have to remind ourselves, of course. We don't know who made these bets, and yeah. and the, the, the I think it's generally accepted that they took place on Pakatar Island. Well, I don't know the source yeah. of that information. I think, know, I, mean, from that from? I think it came from I think it came from club sponsors Betway, Betway when they reported <clears throat> irregular irregular betting patterns coming from that island. That, that well, that's what got told to the press. If it, but it's still hearsay, and the 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 the. Yeah. The jeopardy of listening to hearsay is that you are taking on board, not you, but you know, one mm. can take on board stuff that is a million miles from the truth. Yes. And so the bottom line is we can only be sure of two things, three things. There's um, uh, an abnormality in the betting activity, one. Yeah. Two, Paqueta got four yellow cards as seen. Three, the rules. Those are the only things that we know for sure. Yeah. Everything else is supposition, window dressing, and clickbait. Yeah. Yes. No, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> so, so you don't think? I mean, looking at you say for say for instance, it doesn't. Turn, it, it turns out that he's absolutely fine, and Paqueta has provided. He does oh. satisfy that that. Um, that charging that he gave um, all the evidence he had available or within his power to give, um, then it's down to coincidence, isn't it? Coincidence around the video footage, yeah. And coincidence, you know, what 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 do you think? Is that is that something that 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 is a strong enough uh, barrier, if you like, to prosecute? On, on its own, no. It, it, I, I think the FA would be. Um... 
unwise to convict someone on coincidence alone i, I right. think they need something else they clearly think they well clearly they believe they've got something else because mm. um, uh, they, they pursued this and he's been given time to answer the charges which basically means answer their evidence uh, even yeah. though as i've explained sometimes it's very difficult to prove that you haven't done something um because you're you're proving a negative yeah it's far easier to prove it to to explain that you've done something for a particular reason yeah um but um or, or i i didn't do it because i wasn't there because i've got an alibi well this isn't that sort of case is it so yeah i mean it, it, it to sum up i mean what 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 we've gone through today there's been a lot of stuff there and i think um you know i i, I i've been educated through this uh speaking with you the last couple of times john i i, I feel like i uh, i understand the process now and this is quite it strikes me as quite thin um if you like unless there is some absolutely compelling evidence under the surface that we haven't seen yet I, i'll say this i hope that the fa have got I, I don't hope that obviously he's our he's our player i'd like to see him stay at west ham forever because yeah. I think since um, Paolo Di Canio, probably Dimitri Payet is the only player who's who's been up at that level of artistry. And, and that's what I like to see at West Ham. That's the sort of thing that David yeah. always did his best to expunge, of course, that sort of artistry and flair. And, and Pakatar was wonderful because he rose above that. Um, but speaking as a, as a lawyer and someone who is, I think we should all be keen to preserve the integrity and the credibility of the fa um you would hope that the fa have got something pretty strong yes. because if they don't and if this goes wrong for them then i've no doubt there will be he will try to bring about certain consequences but um you know i i, I think if it's coincidence alone um i think it's going to be I think a tribunal would struggle to find these charges against him. Uh, and if they did, would there be uh, grounds for appeal? Um, if it was flimsy, flimsy. It, it, it's unlikely that there would be grounds to appeal within the FA. Generally speaking, and again, taking it into a criminal context, you you can only appeal if you um, if there was either a sort of material irregularity during the trial, which meant that some evidence came in that was grossly prejudicial or unfair, or if um the judge has incorrectly directed the jury as to what the law is right. I, I think it's very unlikely that an appeal as to the tribunal's findings would, would lie here it, there's always the possibility to appeal against the sanction or the sentence if it's yeah. deemed too hard oh is that what it would be you couldn't uh, you can actually uh, appeal the the uh, the judgment you can only appeal um the sanction I, I think it, 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 it's, I mean, again, I've never served on an FA tribunal, but I think it would be whole, highly unlikely that he would have um, recourse to appeal the, the judgment on the facts within the FA's disciplinary um, structure. Right. He would have um, the right of appeal to the court for arbitration in sport, which is in Lausanne in, in, in Switzerland. But I, I think, um, I mean, the, the, those appeals take years and years and years. And um, if he were banned um, by the FA, that ban would be imposed immediately. And through complementarity with bodies like UEFA and, and FIFA, I, I'm quite confident that that ban would be um ratified throughout the world so you know we, we could be looking subject to the to the length of ban this is a whole different subject because sentence yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is quite a complex sub subject in itself it's nowhere near as clear-cut uh, as a lot of commentators are, are are trying to make out because um just to make this point very briefly when someone is sanctioned or sentenced by the fa or any tribunal or any court they have to listen to uh, any mitigating circumstances. Um, a good example of that is, is it Bruno Tonali, the Newcastle yeah. Italian guy who played for Milan, didn't he? And he, he got done for betting on games. 
his mitigation was um, that I think there were three strands to it. Um, he hadn't been at Newcastle very long, had he been betting on results both with Milan and, and two or three with Newcastle as well. And he was banned, I think, for, um, I've got it, I wrote it down somewhere, 10 months, wasn't it? Yeah, placed more than 50, or well, up to 50 bets. Um, his mitigation was threefold. First of all, he complete confession. Second of all, he was already, already subject to a ban in Italy. They took that into account. And thirdly, and I think really important, he was a gambling addict. Right, right, okay, okay. So that mitigated the sentence. I mean, yeah. um, then you've got you've got Tony, um, what was it, eight months for 232 breaches of FA betting rules. Yeah. Um, I, I believe he pleaded guilty as well. But I don't want to get into the realms of Tony and Tonali because the offences that they were charged... They're not spot-fixing. No, and, and therefore they are actually nowhere near as serious. Yeah. So um, anybody who uses those two as a benchmark is is completely out of line. What again? You know, let, let's just. Um, so what would saying. be a typical example then, John? Who has who has been prosecuted for spot fixing? There there are two actually. Um, there was a guy called um, Bradley Wood who played for Lincoln City. Mm. Um, he was banned um, for six years. Um, wow. because he, he got two mates to bet on him getting booked in two games. And then there was a chap called Kainan or Keenan Isaac, yeah. who played for a non-league team, um, Stratford Town. So that was two games, getting booked in two games? Yeah. And wow. then there was, um, I, I suspect this was far more egregious and serious, but this guy Keenan Isaac, who played for Stratford Town uh, yeah. in 2022, got a 10-year ban for... Um, spot fixing and that again was getting booked so this is so, orders of magnitude more serious than the kind of things that tony and bruno got i it, completely different yeah context. yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. bruno and tony uh tonali rather sorry tonali and um tony are yeah. irrelevant to this whole discussion yeah yeah this is this but, yeah it's in, it's in a different stratosphere isn't it as far as punishment goes yeah I mean, again, um, we, 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 we mustn't speculate, but it, it, let's, let's also be realistic. We, we know that in Brazil there are um, organised crime yeah. is a massive industry, um, as big as anywhere nationally, as, as big um, as anywhere in the world, one would have thought. Yeah. Um, and it's the sort of place where you could imagine that you know a vulnerable family at home might come under certain pressure yes from certain groups in order to avail them of um a betting coup betting gains um now paqueta is denying this and we have to continue to to stress that he claims he knew nothing about this and uh, hopefully that will be proved to be true yeah uh, on the balance of probabilities if not higher but um, you know, if if it is the case that he his family came under some duress, and by extension he was duressed himself, and were he to um, um, approach the FA on that basis, then you can imagine that the mitigation or the mitigating circumstances would be such that any ban would be. Um, uh, you, you know really much reduced yes yeah and, uh, I, I don't i mean i i, I want to stress he he is denying this and i yeah I don't want to i mean the last thing you can I almost think, imagine it can't you that that various people in the social media sphere will start trumpeting that theory it's I not think to theory. be fair though to be fair with that kind of in that kind of scenario he wouldn't want to admit it out loud anyway would he it's the sort of thing he might say share confidentially with the fa yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, look, hopefully that's not true. Hopefully that's not true for two reasons. It, it would be awful to think that he's been living under the um, the cloud of of knowing that his family have been pressured. Mm. And it would be awful to think that he's actually been complicit in getting booked to order in spot fixes. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I think you and I both agree. Uh, of course we do. And and anybody watching this probably agrees that. 
we, we earnestly hope that he will be found not not guilty of these offences. But you you can imagine, because we all know how the how the world works, um, that certain things go on over uh, over which he has had no power whatsoever, uh, and um, you know it. it, it I, I suppose it's a scenario that that um, yeah some people might might consider. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, it was, it was a, a another rumor that was put around. Yet another rumor, but you don't know what uh, <laughs> you don't know what to treat with any seriousness at all. But, but John, look, that's been um, a really comprehensive roundup of the <laughs> situation. So, I appreciate that. I hope um, all of the, all of the viewers have um, found this enjoyable because there is a, a lot of detail. You've stayed away. In fact, you've 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 really knocked a lot of the conspiracy theories on the head. Which is uh, what we what we intended to do, um, uh, overridden some of those excitable headlines and hysteria. Um, what we're going to do is turn this into a a series because this is going to go on. The pack, the Pakatar story is going to go on, and so as it unfolds and as it moves forward and we learn more, we're going to get John back on and we're going to um, uh, look into it a bit further because I'm sure this is going to take a few twists and turns before it reaches hopefully a successful conclusion for Paqueta. Um, so John, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been real great. It's been a privilege having you on. Um, thank you for joining and um, thank you all for watching. See you soon. I'll find the outro. Um, there it is. Come on your irons. <laughs>